Hey everyone, Mr. Sujano here. In today's video, we're taking a look at a multi-console, multi-controller wireless adapter. The Adapix R100 from Big Big Wan. Let's get started. All right, to kick things off, Big Big One sent me the Adapix R100 for a fair and honest review. When I saw what they said this wireless adapter would be compatible with, I was immediately interested. We have the PS5, PS4, PS3, Nintendo Switch, Switch Lite, and Windows 10. For controllers, we have the DualSense, the DualShock 4, the Nintendo Switch Pro controller, the Xbox One controller, and the Xbox Series S and X controller. The packaging for the R100 is simple and straightforward. It shows the adapter, shows the name, and says it has next speed wireless technology. I'm not quite sure what next speed wireless technology is, but it is gonna be tested out. And on the side of it, it says play big, Juan big. The back of the box has the chart we just went over as well as pairing instructions. Inside the box we have the adapter and OTG cable which is USB to USB-C as well as an instruction manual. The adapter is really light and simple. It has one LED and one button and that's about it. Setting up the Adapix R100 was simple and straightforward. You just plug it into the system that you want to play. You see the dot flashing and then you pair your controller to it. The first controller I tried out was the DualShock 4 on the Nintendo Switch. To test this out, I just booted up the DualShock 4 in pairing mode. It connected to the R100 almost right away and worked without issue. Testing out the input delay on the controllers and it was very similar to other wireless controllers on the Switch. The D-pad, the joysticks, everything worked as expected. Pairing the PS5 DualSense controller was also a seamless process. Testing out the controls here with the DualSense 5 and it functioned very similar to the DualSense 4. It worked as expected and comparable to other wireless controllers out there for the Switch. I had no issue at all pairing the Xbox one controller to the R100, but I couldn't pair the Xbox Series XS controller to it at all, and that's a little unfortunate. Now testing the motion controls out on the R100 yielded mixed results. With the DualShock 4, the motion controls worked, but I noticed that the sensor was off a little bit. If you take a look at the aim on the screen versus the controller, the aim is not exactly one for one. It just seems to be drifting a little bit to the right. It didn't take long at all to be completely out of sync to what I'm doing. And if you can see the controller, I'm holding it steady while the aim is drifting ever so slightly to the right. This was a bit of an annoyance. The motion controls on the DualSense controller worked a little bit better than the DualShock 4, but again, it drifted a little bit to the right. Not near as bad as the DualShock 4, but ever so slightly it would drift. You can see here I'm barely moving the controller around. I'm trying to hold it steady, but the aim is ever so slightly creeping to the right. To test this out to see if it was just the adapter or the game, here is the actual Joy-Con and you can see it drifting the opposite way, a little bit to the left. I tested this out with a Brook PS3, PS4 to Nintendo Switch adapter just to see if there was any difference and it drifted ever so slightly to the left, the exact same as the Joy-Con. It is worth noting I didn't test out motion controls with the Xbox controller because Microsoft doesn't build those in. They're a little bit behind the times there. Now I tested this device out on a PC and on a PS4. I had very similar results as I did with the Switch. It was just plug and play. I also tested the device out on a Raspberry Pi and on an Android device. This was interesting because it's not listed on this chart, but it does work. With the Raspberry Pi, I did notice a slight delay with the wireless connection, but I was really impressed with Android. To connect this to an Android device, it's really simple and straightforward. You plug in the adapter to the included OTG cable and plug that directly into your phone. And right now I have the DualSense controller paired to this adapter, which is paired to my phone. As soon as I hit a button on the DualSense controller, you can see the character performing the action on my phone. So here's a closer view of my phone and the DualSense controller. You can see that the DualSense controller is working absolutely fine and it is in wireless mode. There's nothing plugged into it. Don't mind the discoloration on the game. The green screen effect that I have on my camera right now is removing some of the coloring in the game. Now taking a look at the price of the R100 and it's available on Amazon for $19.99. Well, 20 bucks. There's also a coupon. I don't know if this will be active when you're watching this video, but it's save an extra 5%. For comparison, here is the Brook Wingman NS, which is my current wireless adapter and wired adapter that I use on the Nintendo Switch. 
it is $44.95 over double the price. The big difference here is this one also gives you a USB port if you wanted to make a wired controller compatible with the Switch as well. So here's what I liked and what I didn't like about the R100 and we'll start out with what I liked. First and foremost, I do like how simple this is. I do like the price, it's 20 bucks. I do like the fact that to pair a controller, all you have to do is just press this one button and then you can pair your controller and you're good to go. It works with a ton of different controllers and it did work on a bunch of different systems. I was pleasantly surprised to find out this did work with Android and that is a really big plus. Now moving on to what I didn't like about the R100 and the first thing I didn't like about it was the fact that I couldn't get the Xbox Series SX controller to pair with this at all. I couldn't get it to work on the Switch or the PC or the PS4 it wouldn't pair with this device and that was really frustrating and I tried two different controllers out. The second thing I didn't like about the R100 is the fact that the motion controls drifted ever so slightly to the right. It was more pronounced on the DualShock 4 than the DualSense controller, uh, but at the same time here, it was an unpleasant experience. I probably wouldn't pick this up for motion controls. It was a bit of a disappointment that this adapter couldn't be used to wake up the Nintendo Switch, and I also didn't like the fact that you had to repair your controller every single time this lost power. If you unplugged it for any reason, it completely forgot everything about your controller. And the very last thing I didn't like about this, it's kind of more of a wish list than a dislike. I mean, it is marketed as a wireless adapter, but I do wish it had a USB port on here to make wired controllers also compatible with all those systems. Now for the big question, whether or not I'd recommend the R100 from Big Big One, and the answer is yes and no. So no if you want to use this with an Xbox Series S or X controller, and no if you want to use this specifically for motion controls, but yes to pretty much everything else. For 20 bucks, this is a fantastic little adapter. It worked very well on the Switch, it worked well on PC, it worked well on PS4. And I was pleasantly surprised to find out it worked on the Raspberry Pi and also on Android. I didn't have a chance to test this out on PS5 because I don't own a PS5 yet. They're really hard to find. But yeah, at the end of the day here, if you're interested in a plug and play wireless adapter for PC or for Switch or for even PS4 or something, this is very hard to beat at $20. Anyways, that is all I've got for today. Huge shout out to Big Big One for providing this for a fair and honest review. Let me know your thoughts on the R100 in the comments below. If you like this video, leave a like. If you didn't like this video, leave a like. Hit that subscribe button, check out my other videos. Thank you everyone, take care.